Welcome back, guys. Well, we're working on the controls here for the CNC machine. We've gotten our motors in, and uh, one we've made one change since the last video. In the last video, we decided, or we said we were going to mount lead screws to drive this. So we planned on mounting the motor right here with a lead screw attaching to this end right here, and then somewhere in this area we'd have a bracket with an anti-backlash nut and the lead screw would drive the gantry back and forth. Well, uh, we got the pricing on the lead screws and once we added shipping, the two lead screws that we needed were going to be about $150, $170. And uh, we were fine spending that money, but it really goes against the MO of the channel. So uh, what we try to do is we try to do things on a budget. Uh, things that people can do. So what we did is we picked up some belting and we picked up some cogged gears for the motors. Now I don't exactly remember what we paid but I'm gonna say the belt the um, it's nine millimeter three millimeter pitch belt um, GT2 class. I think the belt was 10 bucks for three meters, and I think maybe seven bucks for five of these gears. So under twenty dollars to set up the drive for this machine versus 150, 170. Uh, we see a lot of people use these. We're going to give it a try, and if it doesn't work, we're only out about 20 bucks. So, but we we think it's gonna it's gonna work. So we fabricated a motor mount, and a motor mount's gonna drop in right here. We're gonna mount it in, and stepper motor will mount in behind here, and we'll have a couple of bearings down in these holes, and then the belts will run in each direction. So the Y axis will be mounted the motor will be here instead of here. On the other setup, the x-axis would have mounted here and the lead screw would have went this way. Well, we've already set it up. We built the bracket, we attached it on the top of our roller plate. Um, we slotted some holes so that the same function of these bearings and then we've got our rollers in here so the belt's going to come in come around and go down so we're getting started on that now we made a couple brackets out of just two inch angle iron so we just drilled a couple holes and we've drilled a third hole and then cut it with the bandsaw we've got some 5 8 stock here we just drilled out some nuts and we're going to weld that on in here and we're going to mount it onto the frames so we're going to mount it in this area the belt will come in go around that 5 16th stock come back out and then we've got uh, a tightening clamp that we'll put on there that'll hold the belt that cogs into each other and if we need we'll put a set screw in there to hold the belt we did make a couple of these that have slotted holes on the bottom so that we can tighten up and we'll show those when we go to mount them. So we threaded the belts and we, remember we made two of these things. We ran the belt, went around the, the motor, then we come over and then we have this device here and we've slotted some holes so that we can tighten the belt and we just uh, 3D printed this little part and we can tighten it up and then locks in place. We use these things here, the belts just mesh together and we 3D printed those if we need a set screw in them, we'll put a set screw to hold them but they hold pretty tight and uh, we're able to get a nice belt tension on that. We're not exactly sure what we need once because we haven't calibrated the machine but it's looking real good so far. So we're taking a look at the electronics that drive the uh, CNC plasma cutter and it turned out to be a lot simpler than, than I had thought. Uh, it's very simple so we have a shielded cable coming from each motor one here one here there's four wires 
There's just coil A, coil B. You just take a continuity meter and whichever ones have continuity, they go in one or the other. It doesn't matter which ones where uh, at all, just as long as each coil is separate. So that's wiring up the motor. Um, we have a orange and a green wire that come from the power supply and to give 24 volt power. So we have two drivers, so they're each wired the same on this part of it. And then we have five volt power coming from the Arduino. And the five volt power just comes in and it goes to every positive on here. So there's three positives and then we've daisy chained it over here and three more positives on the schematic, on the, on the drawing. As far as the function of the machine, it's all coming from these, from the Arduino here, and there's just four sets of wires, or two set, two pairs of wires. So, a very simple wiring, and then we just hooked up the power supply, uh, positive, neutral, ground. There's a million videos on YouTube how to do this, so we're not gonna go into it a whole bunch. We're just running a script, or a sketch that we wrote, and we sent it to the machine just to do some figure eights. So it's just running, we're just testing it out. It seems to be working just fine. So we had a 3D part that we had drawn, an axle spacer for a Miata, Miata axle that we 3D printed to create space from the grease cap. And we ran it through the CAM program. We took the same 3D part, we ran it through the CAM program to be able to plasma cut it out. So we're just gonna run a simulation with that part. Uh, you'll notice that the head will stop, not everything will stop for a little bit, and that's just the pause for the puncture for the plasma. We just left the defaults where they are. So we'll we'll try and run the simulation. little bit about the cost of the electronics so with the electronics we have two motors on here this motor we paid 30 bucks for this one we paid 25 for this is a 425 uh, ounces of torque and that's 269 the drivers this driver for the bigger motor was 18 bucks this driver was nine dollars a power supply 24 volt power supply we paid 30 bucks for that power supply. We had the Arduino. We had one of these laying around. It's a clone, um, but you can get these for 10 bucks. So that's what we have into it. We we talked about the belts already. We spent 10 bucks on belts and eight dollars on the gears for the belts. So you add all that together to make this thing drive and run. It's 140 dollars is what we have into the electronics to make this work. So. I think in the last video we were at $291, we had $140, and the only thing we have left is paint. With that, we appreciate you watching the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we've got to get a plasma cutter on order so we can uh, actually test it out and do some real production.